Good morning and welcome to Saturday's Devotions with me, Marty Davison, and we are studying 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 9 to 15. Uh, those people who've been paying attention will notice that I included uh, verse 9 yesterday and uh, I intend to include it again today. So let's just read together 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 9 to 15. It says, For God didn't appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now, we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what's good, both for yourselves and for all. Amen. May God bless our time as we read the word of God together. Amen. And so I've just put down some thoughts here. You know, we should live together. And and that is because, you know, you've got, for God didn't appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So we've got this, th- and then it says, therefore. And so because of what Jesus has done, because of what Jesus has made possible, there is an effect, and it's, it has an effect on our heart, has an effect on our conduct. You know, we become thankful, and we should live. We should be uh, uh, continue living together continually not momentarily not once in a lifetime but daily continually always you know i i put here just a little thought that always springs up you know why do people think they'll spend eternity living with god in his presence when they refuse to live for him and with him here and now you know encourage people to live daily with God, to have a personal relationship so important. You know, as we read through this, we see that uh, uh, Paul is saying, you know, recognize those who labor, esteem them very highly. And I was, uh, you know, reading through this, I remembered a a friend of ours, and he's a a great uh, man of God, and he was on a boat going up the Amazon, and uh, uh, he had his wallet stolen from him when he was in the boat, ready to leave. And he's like, oh, my wallet's gone. And so, you know, he said to the captain of the boat, everybody had a look and they found his wallet, right? And all his cards and everything. Uh, the only thing that was taken out of it was some some loose cash. And uh, the reason that everybody was going, wow. But then when they realized that he was a missionary and in his wallet, there was his credential, his card saying that he was a missionary. And all of a sudden, you know, the fear Uh, Oh, this is a man of God. I've lifted his wallet. And so often uh, thieves would throw away the wallet or run off with the wallet, never to be seen. He thought, I better get it back. And so he left it in a hammock on the boat. And uh, it just shows you, you know, even uh, the world, uh, not all over the place, but in many places, the world has reverence and esteems those people who are called to, to, uh, uh, to preach, you know. So there we go. Just a little thought. Um, I, I put here, uh, one pastor can't look after loads of people. So you need, you know, and we urge, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you. And in, in Gateway Elam Church, you know, I can't look take care of everybody. We have life group leaders and they have a responsibility to ring in and to, to pray into people's lives. And we've been praying um, Ezekiel uh, 43 verses 5 to 13. I've got it here. Just I've got it printed out myself. And, and uh, uh, we've got basically 10, 10 points there that we're praying into the lives of people in the church. We're not just raising, oh, God bless so-and-so, oh, bless. No, we're, we're praying specifically greater 
intimacy with God, greater sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, absolute assurance of his presence and unshakable confidence, courage and boldness that they would confess and, and repent that, you know, there would be a revelation and understanding of how God wants us to live. And so, you know, I can't pray for everybody by name. Well, I could, but it would just take me all day and then I wouldn't get anything else done. But we've got life group leaders and they're praying those prayers into people's lives. I'm praying those prayers into life group leaders. And we've also got leaders in, you know, we've got prime time, our, our leaders, Pastor Dawn, God bless you. You know, we've got little blessings. We, we've got gateway youth, gateway kids, war and women, mighty men. And those people have a responsibility, you know, in, uh, I'll look this up here. Let me get it for you. Uh, Exodus and chapter 18 and verse 21 and this is like Jethro comes uh, Moses' father-in-law comes and he blesses him and he speaks to him and gives him he says look moreover you shall select from all the people able men such as fear God men of truth hate and covetousness and place such over them to be rulers of thousands rulers of hundreds rulers of fifties and rulers of tens and so Jethro says Moses you're killing yourself you're going to wear yourself out you know uh, delegate and those people have a responsibility to you, but also fundamentally to God. So I put here delegate, responsibility, accountability before God. And that's what we're to keep on doing. We're to pour ourselves out into the lives of people, praying for people, seeing them become all that God uh, uh, wants them to become. So, you know, recognize those who labor, esteem them very highly, pray for your life group leader, pray for, you know, if you're part of Gateway Youth, pray for your youth leaders, pray for your kids, gateway kids leaders, you know. Uh, so I put here, because they have a commitment to pray for you. We're praying Isaiah 11, uh, 1 to 3, into people's lives as well. So recognize, esteem them in love, because that will have an effect, a positive uh, uh, effect on your life, okay, if you do that in right standing before God. And so you can see Paul, he gives responsibility to everybody. You know, he outlines a responsibility. Look, you're to warn the unruly. You know, warn those who are insubordinate. Uh, those people who are, you know, saying, talking, you know, just don't, oh, you know, gossip about them. No, pull them up. Hey, what you're saying is wrong. Mom, wrong attitude. You're undermining. It says, comfort the faint-hearted. Another translation is, comfort the feeble-minded. And it reminds me, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. And our mind is to be renewed, renewed by the Word of God. And so some people just need encouragement in the Word of God. Bring them a verse, encourage them, remind them of their identity in Jesus. Uphold the weak. You know, those people who are feeling weak, physically, mentally, emotionally, uphold them in prayer, uphold them in love, uh, uh, do good things to encourage them, you know, be patient with all. So uh, just some some thoughts there before I delve into the questions. And, and the first question is, what do I feel God is saying to me through these verses? And so as I was reading this, I have the interlinear um, Bible open. And so that means I can see uh, sort of the Greek word beside the English word. So uh, uh, another name for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, you know, is Paracletus. Okay, and this word where, where, where Paul tells us we are therefore comfort each other and edify one another. That word comfort is parakelio, which is it comes from the same root as paracletus okay so the holy spirit is also called the comforter and that in greek is para paracletus and we are called to parakelio okay same so uh, you know uh, the comforter paracletus uh, you can look that up in john 14 and verse 16 and john 14 and verse 26 john 15 and verse 26 and john 16 and verse 7, you can see that the Holy Spirit is referred to as the comforter. He who comes alongside to comfort, to build up. And so if I'm full of the Holy Spirit, the, the paracletus, 
the, the one who comes alongside to comfort, right? And it, it also, uh, the Holy Spirit does more things. You know, he teaches, he reminds, he convicts us of sin. He gives us revelation, wisdom, power, guides into all truth, gives spiritual gifts. He's, he, he's our seal that we're believers. He intercedes. There's so, there's so many things that the Holy Spirit does for us and through us. And so if I'm full of the Holy Spirit, if I'm full of the paracletus, I become like him. It is natural for me to be able to comfort others if I am full of the comforter. So God is encouraging me that this is possible, okay? Uh, often we say, well, you know, I haven't experienced that much comfort, so it's very hard, or this is this, I'm like this because, no, if you've received the Holy Spirit, you have received all these things. He is in you and, you know, he wants to uh, uh, transform you so that your nature uh, it becomes like his nature. So I said, walk in step, unity with the Spirit. And so how do we do this? Uh, we, we, we can quench, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. He is holy. And so we need to be careful, uh, I've put in what in what you watch, in what you listen to, in what you speak. You know, your actions and your thoughts can quench and grieve the Holy Spirit. And so if you have done that, it'd be vigilant. Uh, repent, say you're sorry, and invite the Holy Spirit and tell him how much you desire to have a close relationship. Make time for him. You know, I've put here, be sensitive to the still, small voice. And that sort of comes from Isaiah. Let me open up Isaiah for you here. Isaiah 30 and verse 21 says this. Let me scroll down. It says, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. And so it, it, for me, it is just that intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. So you can, you know, you're not sure, do I go here? Do I go there? Do I do this? Do I do that? You know, what's Holy Spirit, what's the decision? And he says, here, this is a way. Walk in it. Isn't that lovely? Uh, you know, ask, I put, ask for directions and situations. Include God in every aspect of your life. So the next question, is there a sin I need to abandon? Uh, sin is where we don't obey the will of God, okay? He, you know, here in these few verses, there's a, such a revelation of his will. Let, let me read it for you again, verses uh, 11 to 15. So the will of God is therefore comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. We urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the, the weak, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursuing what is good for yourselves and for all. And so we see him, so many things here, instructions and in how to live. And it's not complicated. You know, if we don't apply that, uh, uh, then we're sinning. And so I would say, well, we need to let God's truth permeate our lives. You know, I put here, marinate in his truth. So it becomes the attitude of our heart. And I find I just need to keep on reading and reading and refreshing and asking the Holy Spirit, you know, bring to mind. Holy Spirit, remind me of those verses I read this morning, please. Uh, so uh, question four, do these verses speak of a promise? Uh, verse nine uh, is made, uh, uh, verse 10, possible. Let me, you know, so it's a promise of habitation. Uh, for God didn't appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. And so we, whether we're alive right now or whether we've died and gone to glory, we are to always be in habitation, in communion, in relationship, living with God but here, the promise of being the temple of the Holy Spirit, God with us in Jesus became God with us in the Holy Spirit, making it possible to live with him. So question five, is there an example I need to follow? Well, we see that, 
you know, because we have the Spirit of God in us and having a relationship with God, it affects all our relationships, okay? So those with responsibility over us, it has an impact. You know, we, we recognize them, we esteem them, we love them. Those in the church family around us, it, it has an impact. We exhort them, you know, we uphold them, we're patient. And, and those uh, outside of all that as well, you know, it says, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. And so I've put comfort, support, care, being patient. You know, that's some of the examples that we need to follow. So question six, what do these verses teach me about the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit? Uh, I've mentioned verse nine and 10 already, but what I see is this, as we read verses 11 and 15, you know, it, we can see that those that do this, we would describe those people that do that as they're godly. Wow, that's a godly person. Just the way they get on, their conduct, their behavior. You know, if they were to fill those scriptures really well daily, we go, yeah, they're godly. And, and so we can see the character and image of God. Uh, and, you know, that we can reflect. Men and women who walk in the Holy Spirit, walk close to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit can reflect. So, so people will see God through us if we walk with him. So question seven, is there any warning that I must heed? It says here, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. I've put here, the warning is don't, you know, when someone does something bad against you, don't react. Often I say, don't react, respond. But here I've put, don't react, don't even respond. Because sometimes we can respond in the flesh, you know, uh, uh, polished flesh, but it's still the flesh. Uh, remember, don't fight against, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities. So when we, when we respond in spirit, uh, the first thing is is to pray. Really, remember, don't avenge. God uh, is is our judge. God is our righteousness. He'll take care of it. You know, don't be get that attitude or let that attitude take hold of wanting to get your own back. You know, it says actively pursue what is good. And if someone's done really evil against you, um, you might need help from the Holy Spirit to actively pursue what is good in that situation. And it's you know it's it's not good. It says, you know, good uh, for yourselves, but that actually means for yourselves as in the body, the family of Christ and then for every, everyone else, all mankind. So it's not a self-centered, self yourselves, it's it's everybody. And so it, it reminds me of, you know, uh, uh, where possible, live in peace. Reminds me of Jesus's words that we're called to be peacemakers. So uh, eight. What are their lessons are there in these verses? Um, we're to be givers, you know, uh, bring love and faith and hope. And you can be overwhelmed by all the instructions, but I just want to encourage you that Jesus says, come to me all who are thirsty. And John uh, uh, chapter seven says this, and let me get there. John chapter seven and verse 37 says this. It says, on the last days, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. How do we apply that? Come to Jesus daily. Be filled to overflowing. Let his river flow out of you. Question 10, is there anything to confess? I've gone over my time, so I'll leave that with you. Hope to see you Monday. Uh, God bless you. Bye bye for now.